Linda, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Greetings from the USA and everybody in the UK. Blessings every time. So, of course, you've got to let the listeners know who is Amanda Romero and a little bit about what you do. Well, a little bit about what I do is a little bit similar to what is going on over in, uh, you know, in Nigeria and everything. I'm an activist. Um, mainly, I have been giving voices. I believe that we can become victors over victimization. I ended up growing up in a very difficult lifestyle. I was trafficked, and um, I took a very big stance back in 2013, and we started a program, me and my daughter, called Commander's Renegades, and I've since became pretty much a person who does journalism. I inspire people that there is ways to overcome everything. And throughout all the negative that we go through, there's always someone there. You're never alone. And we pretty much just make people laugh, smile. I'm an, a model. I sing. I write poetry. I pretty much do it all, Kat. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. That's so good. So, you know, you have mentioned, you know, you've gone through a lot of struggles and faced a lot of obstacles, but is there kind of some advice or anything that you could pass on to the listeners out there who might be going to either similar um, struggles or just a struggle in general? Well, basically, right now, with everything that's going on in the world with, you know, all of the different situations that we're not in control of, um, I'm a recovering addict, of course. Uh, I struggled with that for a long time, being in trafficking as well. You can always sit there and share your story. And you need to be empathetic when you hear other people's stories because you don't know what walks they go through in life. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for you to sit there and know what one person's feeling. Now, you might not understand exactly where they're coming from, but you can be a shoulder for them to lean on and you don't need to be judgmental because until you walk a mile in a person's shoes, you don't know what kind of upbringing they've had and you really can't put yourself in their position until you've actually been in their position. For real, for real. Definitely some real talk there. So, you know, you've spoke about walking in a mile in somebody else's shoe and all these things. But you know what? Stereotypes are around. And first of all, I want to just big you up. You know, not many people will say, you know, I'm a recovering addict or I'm this and that because of the stereotypes. So yeah. do, do you think you could change the stereotype? Actually, I am a part of a, uh, a very close group. And we are, we've been setting out to change the stereotype. Okay. Um, I'm very popular on blogs and Facebook. I started a, uh, an, a, a type of thing because of everybody trying to tr gain fame. Because right now, you know, that the opiate epidemic yeah. and addiction and depression are very prominent within everywhere. Like, it's not only in the United States, it's over in UK, it's in Nigeria, it's everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. There's addiction problems, there's mental health problems, there's people that are just struggling and suffering every day. We're trying to start and implement that whatever you have to do in order to stay alive is your walk. Mm -hmm. Like, we can't sit there and continue with having the uprise in our numbers by allowing people to continue to think that they have to be silent in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because that in shape stands for the guilt and the shame that goes along with addiction. Because like you mentioned about the stereotypes, yeah. it's like, it, it's hard to stare and come out and look at somebody and be like, oh, I, I'm an ex-addict. Because it's like, okay, well, hide your stuff. First off, I've never stolen anything from anybody. Um, I've never been criminally charged for any of my addiction problems. And, you know, I've been lucky in that misfortune. Now, a lot of people there, and they do, they make mistakes. And then they're 
classified as this forever because it goes on the record. Like, there's no sense in automatically just throwing it out there. But what the problem with that is, when you suffer in silence, nobody knows how to help you. For real. Definitely. So if, if you've got, if you've got like, you know, your neighbors and everything going in the house and, and they're, they're shooting up or they're like, you know, using crack cocaine or doing something along those lines, yeah. but then they're coming out and they're trying to portray a different persona yeah. and we're not really healing as a society in general. We're just basically sweeping it under the rug. For real. It's like a mask. <laughs> Yep, exactly. And it's funny that you mentioned that because um, whenever I first started doing this, um, back in 2016, I don't know if you're familiar with the Million Mask March. I know it's popular over in uh, the UK on November 5th. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I, I participated on November 5th in 2017. And I demasked myself in front of the White House and told everybody about the courage that I had to overcome yeah. with my addiction and also escaping from sex trafficking. Yeah. Wow. So basically, and then um, after that, later on within the year, I ended up helping establish the first national dual diagnosis walk for recovery with uh, a great colleague of mine who's uh, my sister in arms over here in DC. Yeah. And it's, you know, took off and we've done a lot of work over here within our government. But like I said, I want to take it to more of an international platform where we can set up renegades all over the world because not people, not a lot of people have access to the group counseling and stuff like that. Yeah. And when you are able to relate to somebody, you can listen and you can give them advice. For real. You can be, you know, more uh, apathetic about it. Like, you know, you can let them know in a blunt manner what exactly is going on. But you can be that empathetic shoulder that they need because everybody needs somebody to listen to them once in a while. Definitely. No matter what. Yeah, for real, for real. So, you know, is there um, any uh, website or anything like that you've got set up at the minute where people can go and check it out or not yet? Um, actually, we do. Uh, I, I am a moderator for a group that's called Diary of a Junkie on Facebook. Um, we also have another group that's a big group. It's called Get Clean or Die Trying. Okay. And then you have my website as well. It's uh, DC Thunder, and I don't know exactly the rest of it because I was in a hurry to set it up, and I just use it for my <laughs> motivational writing. Yeah. But I can get all that information out oh, no. through uh Definitely. Please do that, for real. So, you know, you mentioned yes. at the start, you know, you do poetry, you do modeling, all these kind of things. So tell us a little bit about your poetry, a little bit about some of the things that you get up to and what you do. Well, basically, um, it, it was kind of funny because with what I do with my poetry, um, it's very raw. Okay. Uh it, whenever I say it's very raw, like a lot of people, it, it hits home. Mm. It hits home because I write about my life. Yeah, I write about my feelings because, like I said, whenever I said about my upbringing, um, there was a lot of abuse within my life, yeah. you know, oh, well. uh, sexual, emotional, and physical. And I also was institutionalized, so there was a lot of abandonment issues. Yeah, So I just put it out there and I wasn't afraid to be myself. Um, I, I, I have a unique way of putting things into words. Now, whenever I speak them, not so much comes out clearly, hmm. but I also have disassociative identity disorder. Okay. I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I've heard of it, but I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about it. 
Okay, well, disassociative identity disorder is a personality disorder that some people suffer from. It's been through serious traumatic events as a child. Okay. It causes your mind to react in a... I consider it a blessing, to be honest with you. Yeah. Because most people wouldn't have survived what I went through. Um, my mind allowed other people... Yeah. To come into play to be protectors of okay. me. So basically, there's like a lot of, you know, formats of my childhood that I'm remembering now because as an adult, you know, they're trying to come together. And with my healing process that I do, it's like they're all coming and formatting these thoughts that they blocked out so that we can heal in general. So I use my writing and my poetry as that format to let all of them express their pain. Then I go back over it and read it. And then we sit down and, like, you know, I write back and forth. So that okay. makes journaling very important within my therapeutic role. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, you know, you know what, Amanda, how would you like the listeners to remember you? How, what? But from today, when they, when they listen to your, you know, having an interview, the first time they've met you or they've heard you before, how would you like them to remember you or go and check out from you? Well, basically, I don't like people to stare and feel sorry about the things that we go through in life. Yeah. I want people to realize that there's always going to be a victim in play. But you've got to be the victim of your own circumstance. Mm. I never let anything hold me down. I always keep a smile on my face. And I always let other people see that there's positive no matter what the situation brings. Because despite everything that I go through on a daily basis, yeah. I love the smile. I love just going outside and taking a deep breath and being thankful for what's around me. For real. For a long time, I used to stare and be like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Mm. But then it's like you wake up one day and you realize that there's so much beauty within the world. Yeah, there's a lot of ugly, but you've got to find your own beautiful. And you've got to leave your own mark. Mm -hmm. You've got to bring the change to be proud of. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that for sure. So... What's your next steps? What's your plans? I know we've got COVID and things, but what's your next steps or what you would like to do for the future? Well, actually, what I'm trying to do literally is I, uh, I have my book that's being published this year. I'm just waiting to get that taken care of. I'm on my last, you know, payments for that. Yeah. It's called Recovery Road. And what it is is I've been kind of like, a peer leader, cheerleader. Okay. Um, it's basically giving advice to people that's been through similar situations or other situations where they just needed somebody to reach out to. So it's a generalized book based on everybody's trials and tribulations that they've had to go through, whether it's parents that lost their children that are grieving, um, you know, we just touch on all kinds of life's yeah. issues and traumas and just ways to overcome it. Mm -hmm. So I have that in line. And not to mention, I want to continue with my schooling because I am trying to be a peer certified specialist. Okay. And get it set up where I can go and volunteer my time to teach other people in the same predicaments as me that want to help out mm -hmm. a new platform to have a second chance. Because, you know, like I said, as addicts, we feel like we don't have anything to offer. Yeah. And I want them to realize that with our stories, you, your story can like really touch somebody else's world in a mannerism that you don't even know. For real. Definitely. And also, I'm uh, trying to pursue my uh, my little self-acclaimed, not rap career, 
because I'm not really a rapper. I, I guess you'd say I'm more of a hip hop artist and a choreographer. So I've been working on that a little bit as well. Okay, okay. I like the sound of that too. So say if people wanted to connect with you, you know, on social media, these things, do you know how they can do that? So your Instagram, your Facebook and those sort of things? Um, yes, on um, Instagram, I am Angel Eyed Enchantress. Okay. And on Facebook, um, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to uh, get to me. So I would have to stare and go through uh, Instagram mostly. Okay. Because Facebook, I use Jane Smith. Like I said, I wanted to remain anonymous and keep it at my own personal page yeah compared to what i do <laughs> for real for real so you know what i'm gonna put you on the spot just a little bit now and ask you is there anything you would like to either perform or say hopefully with no swearing in but anything you poetry wise you know you said you do like little bits of hip-hop anything you would like to share with the listeners out there if you want to actually uh that's funny that you say that because i I wouldn't mind. Okay. Okay, give me one second. All right, you got it. Yep, 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 yep. I got it. But I'm going to do it like free flow and see if I can get it. YouTube. Oh, boy. Just bear with me one second. No problem. Of course, you know. <laughs> I put you on the spot, so it's all good. Yeah, but it, I, I kind of figured that that might have been coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now, um, I, I do uh, what is called, they call me DC Thunder, is my artist name. Okay. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the group Imagine Dragons. Mm, I don't think so. I've, I've some, I okay, thought, well, yeah, I was going to say, I've heard, I think I've heard the name, if I'm honest, because it did come to my mind, but I haven't heard lots of stuff. Okay, well, they have a song that's called Thunder. Okay. And, um, I literally uh, performed it at our first uh, walk. Okay, okay. And I actually did my own. It's my own version of it. All right. Is it a clean version for the radio? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, cool. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So yes, when... uh, it's PG. It's PG. Okay, so when you're ready. <laughs> of course, I know we're on live radio, so no. <laughs> no worries. But basically, it's, um, it's through the eyes of you know, what I go through on a, a daily basis with okay. my addiction and all of that. Okay. So, all right, let's see. Here. Of course, we're probably going to have, you know, that like five second wait that we've got to do. If YouTube all don't right. work, be brave and do it a cappella. Oh, I'm going to. I'm okay. going to. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Just an addict with a quick fuse. I was up tight, tired of the abuse. I've been dreaming of bigger things and want to leave that old life behind. I'm not your yes, sir. I'm not your follower. Don't fit your box, don't fit your move. I had a seat in the lawyer. You got my number. Shut for lightning. Now we see thunder, thunder, thunder. Thunder, uh, thunder, uh, thunder, uh, thunder, uh, thunder, 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 uh, thunder, 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 thunder. You feel my thunder? Lightning, we recover. Thunder, feel the thunder. Lightning, DC thunder. Okay, that was good. All the kids were laughing. In my classes, well, I was scheming for the masses. Who do you think you are? I know I'm going to be the big star. They said I'm basic. They said I was easy. I was always riding in the backseat 
Now I'm smiling from a stage while you're sitting in the nosebleeds. And, and I, I think I'll, I'll like leave it at, at that because the fact that like I'm already starting to blush, be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that internationally. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, you did good, man, for real. You know what, Amanda, I, I really appreciate you know you speaking with us and telling your truth and telling your story because you know, like I said, it takes courage to tell a story that so many people do judge about. And I really appreciate you doing that. And of course, please send your information over because you never know who's listening and you never know if it's hitting their truth, you know? Exactly. And you know, to all of the listeners out there, I know that we're all struggling right now and at everything. And it's very important to know it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. But what's not okay is acting on an impulse. Because no matter what, life gets better. Like, no lie. And there's always hope. And there's always someone out there listening. To it. Even if it's a complete stranger, millions of miles away. Yeah. There's someone out there that's willing to be there for you. So don't give up on yourself. Because somebody's not going to give up on you. For real, sis. Blessings. You know what? I just, like I said, keep in touch. Let us know how your story is going, how your journey is going. And once again, I appreciate your time and talking to us for real. I appreciate you, Kat. I just want to take a minute to say thanks to World League Promotions as well. For real. For, you know, setting this up and giving me the ability to meet you. And also, Arawak, you guys are amazing. I appreciate all the hard work you do with all of us. And it's just a blessing. Definitely. And you, you're, you're, you're a very amazing woman, Kat. Oh, you give thanks. You too. Work as well. You too. Give thanks for real. Yeah. Amen. For real. <laughs> Keep your head strong. Yeah. Speak soon. You as well, sis. You as well. All right. Bless up. Bless. Bless up. Yes, people, please do go and check out Amanda Romero's work, okay? And of course, like she said, try not to judge somebody just by looking at them. You know, I do think it's really powerful and really strong that, you know, she came out and she told us her story. So right now, we're going to be playing one or two tunes, okay? And of course, if you have been affected by any of those topics, please do let me know. I have some numbers available as well for... Um, places if you've drugs she mentioned sex trafficking as well that she's passed on okay but keeping it greater for later we have reggae birthdays coming up new tunes and of course poetry moments so keep it locked in but until then like i said we've got two great tunes coming your way okay big shout out to everybody tuning in and actually loads of people have been commenting that they really enjoyed that interview so big respect each and every time here we go you hear me now, man? DJ can't know what she are if we are not in flashy type. God alone say if you take it one way, yes. No fella chain, no leave me if a friend want go bend and go take it wrong way. Arawa creator, you don't know what piece that I represent. Say, hey. If I ever make it in a life. 